Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Darren and welcome to my next stitch with me. So today I'm working on my Jan, Leith, Jan Lynn piece, which is called Northern Lights. And as I mentioned, I was going to be doing some black stitching for a couple of people. So I apologize if you're rustling. It's me moving stuff around so that I can get to where I need to be. <laughs> um, so a couple of people have asked for a couple of tips with regards to um, stitching on black. So we'll see what we can do there. So let me just get this, this stitch started. Actually, first thing I'm going to do is cut this thread in half because it's way too long. <laughs> I don't know how Gail Phillips does it. She stitches on all the with these really, really long pieces of floss, and I've no idea how. Sorry, you probably just saw my shoulder there. I forgot to pick up my scissors. So this piece uses three strands over one. This is 14 count black ada. There we go. All right, let's try this again. So just get this bit started and then I go through a couple of tips that I've learned for using black. Now this is on 14 count black Ada. Um, so the holes are quite easy to see on this. Um, I do have a couple of pieces on 18 count and 16 count. So, first tip. So if you're using black Ada, the best thing to do is if you're struggling to see the holes, now I don't know how well you can see these holes. You can't really see them. I don't know how this is gonna work, but we'll see. Um, is just get a piece of white paper. it underneath on your lap and as you can see you can see the holes a bit clearer now so anything white like a white towel or pillowcase paper you can see the difference just from adding the white underneath so anything white underneath will help or if like me and you've done diamond painting before you may have let me zoom out so you can see this you may have one of these this is a light pad. So you just put that underneath. Like I say, it's already white, so you can see the holes. So let me zoom you in so you can see the difference. So you can already see the holes, and then the light pads come with three different settings. So, there you, go. you can see one hole there, brighter and the brightest. So light pads are brilliant for working on black Ada, because you can see it's not too bright, it's not in your face. So you can still stitch away merrily. And it really does make a big difference. So what we'll do is we'll see if we see if I can stitch a bit with the light pad underneath. So covered up my pattern, so <laughs> So yeah, so having some kind of white or light source behind your project makes it a lot easier you to find the holes when stitching on black. Now, I generally will stitch on anything black during the day when I've got natural light, because obviously that's the best way of being able to see things. But if I do stitch on it, so it gets darker, then I do generally use my light pad. Um, especially with the 18 count Ada, which is for London. Um, that one, because it's obviously smaller holes, works out a lot better with the light pad. Well, the only thing, because I like to do pin stitch, is when you've got a light pad behind you, work, you can't actually see on some of them which way your fabrics are going, whether they're going up or across. 
So it does make it a bit hard to, when you're coming to do a pin stitch, as to which way the fabric's going. But yeah, it definitely makes it a lot easier. And light pads are not dear either. You can get them on Amazon. Now, I got mine when I was in the UK, so I think it cost me something like, I think it was like eight pound, or 16 Australian dollars, or whatever there is in any other country, currencies. <laughs> so yeah, it wasn't dear at all. Um, so they're definitely worth it if you're gonna be doing a lot of stitching on black or dark either. I would have, highly recommend one. And they don't get hot either on your knee. So you can sit with it on your knee for ages. It doesn't get hot at all. It's only LED lights. I mean, one other thing that you could do, even if you have like those LED strip lights, you know what you get on a little strip, you plug them in and put them on your knee. That'll probably work as well. There are loads of different ways that you can you can do it. I know a lot of people like to just have a towel or a pillowcase on the knee. Um, but it's completely up to you, as I say, with me. Because I generally do my dark stitching, as I say, during the day. It's not too, too bad. I can actually see what I'm doing. Now, I've only got two questions for this week's Stitch With Me. So, but I'll answer those as well in a moment. So, quick update for you. <clears throat> so, still not heard from the hospital yet. Um, but to be fair, my ear today isn't as bad. So, if it continues like that, we're doing good. Yesterday it was pretty bunged up and so I could add the ear out of it, but today I've woke up and it's not that bad. So I'm hoping it may be starting to fix itself finally. I'm hoping. So I spoke to my mum yesterday as well. She's doing good. She goes for her physio thing uh, tomorrow. So it's Sunday here now, so it's Monday the 9th. She goes for her physio. Um, to try and get her ears and eyes realigned. So I don't know how they're going to do it, but hey, there we go. Um, so, but she's t been told that once they've done it, she's not allowed to move her head for an hour. Because uh, otherwise it undoes everything. So that's going to be fun for her because obviously she's got to get back from where the physio place is, back home. And then when she gets home, uh, by the time she gets home, shall I say, her carers will be there to give her a dinner. So she won't be able to eat because she won't be able to move her head. So she doesn't know how she's going to do it, but she's going to attempt to do it anyway. So I'm um, blessed. My two brothers are moaning at her to make sure she doesn't move her head, and so she feels like they're picking on her. It's like, well, they're not picking on you. They're just telling you what you need to do. Because with my mum, as you know, because she forget, she's forgetting a lot of things just lately. She needs to be reminded. Because knowing her, she'll come out and start moving ahead and looking around and stuff like that. And I'm saying, since she's paying for it, you don't want to be spending all that money to waste it on doing it all within a couple of minutes. So, but hopefully it works. She can get some relief from the dizzy spells that she keeps getting. But other than that, she's doing really well. So, it's her birthday soon. Um, be her 70th birthday. So she's getting old now. <laughs> so hers is on the 3rd of September. 
And the man and my twin brother did on the 18th. When I was speaking to her yesterday, she went, I've sent you birthday cards. I was like, you're a bit early. I was just going to August. And well, your brother made us fill them all in. So my brother go, gets my elder brother and my niece to write the cards. Gets my mum to write her cards and send them off. Normally I have to remind them and say, right, you've got, if you want to get it here in time, you need to send it off by this date or whatever. So I wouldn't have normally said anything until like the 1st of September. But he's already on the ball for a change. I haven't even sent theirs. <laughs> so I'll be getting theirs this week, this week and getting those sent off. I still don't know if they're doing anything for my mum's birthday. Hmm. They've not said anything, so I don't know. I mean, in the UK, they have re lifted all restrictions for some strange reason. Um, so it means family and that can come round, so I don't know if anyone's going to turn up and visit her. And over here, we've just had our three day lo well it what started as a three day lockdown it got extended to seven uh, eight days and we've just been informed this morning that it's now getting lifted as from four o'clock tonight which is great which means i can now go to college and find out about my course i want to do see how much it's going to cost me and see what payment options they have available because i doubt i'll be able to afford to pay all in one go so I can do that on Friday when I finish work, which is going to be good. I think I found a computer as well. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, we're going to go and have a look on tomorrow, actually, after work. Um, one of the shops over here called JB Hi-Fi and they have a computer and bear in mind most computers over here are about 1200 upwards and they have one which is 300 so I'm gonna go and have a look at it and see if it's what I need see if it'll do what I need for the requirements for the college courses and if it is, then I may have a computer. I'm hoping. But again, it depends on what options are available. I thought I was in the wrong spot, then I was about to cry. So yes, so I may have a computer to be able to start doing college stuff. And I just need to get on the course, find out how much there is. I'm hoping it's not going to be too much. Or if they allow you to pay it off, I'm hoping it's not going to be too much per week or per month, however they do it over here. That's one thing I've noticed over here compared to the UK. In the UK, most things, you, if you get on HP, uh, you pay monthly. Over here, you've got the options of weekly, monthly, I think even fortnightly. <laughs> see what options are available oops I'm turning that bit off so as I said I did have two questions so these are gonna be really really quick questions the first one I didn't even take down the names was um, what size needles do I use? So I like to use size 28. I have size 28 Boeing needles. So they're the ones I mainly use. If a needle comes in a kit, I will use that one from the kit for 
project. And nine out of ten, I think they're John James needles. I think this is a John James needle as well, to be honest. Um, I don't mind them. They're, they're an alright needle as well. But normally I use a size 28 Boeing needle, which I need to look at trying to find some more of those. I don't know why. So if any of you guys actually know where you can buy bulk needles from, let me know. Because it's going to work out cheaper buying bulk need or bulk needles rather than just the odd packet. Because an odd packet is not going to last me long. <laughs> so yeah, so if you know where you can buy bulk needles from, let me know. Because that would come in really, really handy. And the other question I got was, uh, what is my favourite floss? Well, the only floss I really use is DMC. I do have the Missy Seda Silk. I do like that. I must admit that is really nice to, to work with. It just glides through the, the fabric. So yeah, so I've not tried the the Weeks Dye Works or I don't know any other ones. <laughs> Various bath silks and I don't know, colour and cottons. I think it's colour and cottons, yeah. So I've got a couple of couple of them that got sent to me, but I've never used them. Maybe I really should try and use those on a on a project of some sort. Maybe when I finally get my Anzac piece off my brother. <laughs> Maybe use them in that. So yeah, so those are the only two questions I got this week. I think it's gonna be a bit harder for people to get me questions. Obviously we're gonna be doing two stitch with me a week now instead of just one. subjects to talk about. I just want to thank Tia as well from Calm Creations. After watching my last video, she gave me a couple of options of how I couldn't use my overhead camera arm, so then I can use my Larry stand as well. As you can see Tia, I'm not doing any of the options that you gave me. <laughs> So because, as I said on my video, everything I've got is too thick to hold the the arm. So she suggested taking a shelf. What she did was she took a shelf out of one of her cupboards and sat it on a side table. And that worked. She clamped it onto there. And the other option was using a breadboard. <laughs> so I said, I've got, definitely got a breadboard. Uh, we're taking the shelf out of a cupboard. Uh, most of mine are fixed in, but you have to screw it in from the sides, so I don't think that one would work, but I need to go around and check the rest of my cupboards and see if I can pull the shelf out. So, who knows, maybe next week I may have it where it's actually overhead and I can use my Larry stand, which would make it a lot easier. And would probably stop me from headbutting the camera as well. I'm going to insert a little video at the end as well of Ginger and Tiger idiots. So, Tiger was asleep in one of the beds, cat beds, and it's the smallest cat bed we've got. And Ginger decided he wanted in there as well. So, it's these two cats, bear in mind, they're both decent sized cats sat there trying to both get into this one tiny little cat bed. So, 
in the end, Tiger just gave him a wash. And then they went to sleep in this tiny little bed. Well, actually, Ginger was half in it and half out of it. <laughs> So this one, I'm looking forward to getting down onto the, the rocks underneath it. Because once you put them in, it doesn't look like they're floating. They're actually on something. I do apologise for the idiot going past. I don't know why they always seem to want to make a noise on a Sunday. And be complaining about idiots. Sunday's meant to be a day of rest and quiet. Not over here. It's a day for idiots to come out and do burnouts and whatnot. So the weather over here at the moment looks like it's going to start changing soon which is good uh, well the daytime temperatures are still going to be roughly around about the same which is in the low 20s uh, and the nighttime temperature is meant to warm up so instead of getting up to like one degrees in the morning it's now going to be about between eight and ten which is good because it's absolutely freezing first thing in the morning at half past four i do have the Heated to come on at three o'clock in the morning just to take the chill off. So when you get up in the morning, you see the cat sat in front of the heater, keeping warm. I keep headbutting the camera, so I apologize. <laughs> I've obviously got it a bit closer than I normally do. So yeah, so we're due to warm up and I say, since it's started warming up a bit, I don't know why, but all the cockatoos have disappeared. Um, so normally the cockatoos will start at 6 o'clock in the morning. I don't know where they come from, but they all decide to fly over at the house at 6 o'clock in the morning, making an awful racket, as you've heard them before. And they've all disappeared. If you can hear a bird at the moment, that's a crow making the noise. That one was the crow. I don't know if you could hear it, if you picked it up on here. They're the noisiest ones, but they don't start as early. Yeah, but the cockatoos have disappeared. But with the cockatoos disappearing, it means that the lorikeets will be coming soon. Because as it starts getting into spring, the bottle brush trees start blooming. And that's what the lorikeets love. As soon as we've got three or four of them out the front of the house, we have hundreds of lorikeets getting the nectar from the bulb brush. So we'll probably have loads of them coming soon. But to be fair, they don't really start that early in the morning, he says, until it gets into like nearer summertime. So, fingers crossed. Cats have been really good just lately. They've actually allowed us to have a lie-in. Yesterday they didn't wake anyone up until just gone six o'clock. And then today, it was half past six. It's like, cool. But I know for a fact, as soon as it starts getting lighter mornings, they'll be in. 4.30 in the morning, waking us up. Wanting food. <laughs> Let me just mark these stitches off so I know where I've done.
stuff. Always makes me laugh as well when you have to do black stitching on black Ada. <laughs> I just about to sound like doing white stitching on white Ada. It does add to the effect though, so it does look good. When I can split my thread. Anything when you're working from paper charts, you have stuff everywhere. You have your highlighters, you have your floss, so you've got your key, and <laughs> yeah, kind of gets everywhere. And then you always move something to do some another part, and you end up covering up your key, so you can't see where you need to go. Right, so I'm going this here. As I say, we found out we were under a lockdown this morning. So Shane found his sister up to let her know. And she's like, well, if you want to come over, you can help her husband to print up some shade cloth or something. And you come over and help. It's like, well, lockdown doesn't lift till four o'clock. She went, eh, no one's going to know. So he's gone. <laughs> And she said, well, you can pick me some milk up on the way. She went, and then if they say anything, you can just say you're taking some shopping for a relative. And I was like, yeah, all right then. So he's disappeared over there. And I was like, well, you were meant to be washing the car. Oh, I'll wash it when I come back. But because he's not seen his sister for... Well, near on two weeks. Now, I have a funny feeling he's not going to be back early. So then the car will not, the car will not get washed. Well, never mind. Luckily, it's not too bad. It doesn't need a clean. But it's not overly dirty that it stands out. You know where you see these people driving around and it looks like they've just been rallying in the cars? Yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> The only thing Shane doesn't like about doing the car is he's no good at cleaning the windows. Um, so he's washed the car and then through the windows. And then you're driving along and you're like, well, I can't even see it. It's streaky as anything. Well, I can't do windows. Why didn't you say? I mean, I'm not brilliant at doing windows and cars, but I can kind of do them. Kind of. I'm not the best. Um, where are we going? That's that one. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're my. I hate doing windows as well. When I when I used to work at BMW, I used to help out every now and then with the validators. And you can always guarantee they ask you to do the windows. It's like I'm no good at windows. And you see them doing it, and the windows are. Spotless, and it takes them like two seconds to do a window. I'm doing a window, it takes me at least half an hour just to do one. It's like, do a bit, stand back. No, nope, too many streaks, go back in, try again. But yeah, when you see the people who are doing for, for their living as a valet, and they do it so quickly, and you're like, you need to teach me how to do that. I really need to know.
And also get the other blue in this ear. And that black should hopefully stand out. I'm pretty sure it did on my uh, last attempt at this one. The one that I stuffed up on and did it too close to the edge of the fabric. Which reminds me, I still need to contact the person who said that they could sort that one out. That message was in my junk box. As you know, I've had a problem with my emails. Everything went to the junk box for some reason. So I'm going through and working through all those. So some people have had replies already. Some people haven't got around to yet. But I really need to get them sorted out. Because one of them was... She said, the lady contacted me, said that she could turn my old one into a pin cushion. She said, well, there's zero margins for the base, but she says she can do it. So I just need to contact her to arrange to get that sent over to her so she can change it into the pin cushion. Which would be quite awesome, having one of your stitching pieces done as a pin cushion. As I've said many times, I'm no good with a sewing machine or anything like that. Or sewing, <laughs> come to think of it. Right. Can I pin this somewhere? Yes, here. So if you've watched my update video today, well, this week, you'll see that I'm really moving with the super size Tiger family. I'll just get off the Q snap so I could get to the next part when I stitch on. And I was like, I'm gonna see what it looks like fully open. And it looks absolutely amazing. I know that it always looks good in the camera, but sometimes when you're up close, you're thinking, We'll see how it looks. But yeah, I took it out and I actually laid it over the sofa. And it looks absolutely amazing. I love it. So now all I need to do is get cracking on it and get some more done. <laughs> so I'm gonna complete the, the tiger first, since that seems to be everyone's main preference was finishing the head off. So I'm gonna get that tiger head done first. Well I think I'm gonna work the two Two pages, so the full side of the head, and then part of it will go into his body as well. So I'm going to work the two pages across, and then go into the the final page afterwards, which is the like background and just a tiny bit at the back of his of the tiger. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, the only downside to that is it means I'm going to get to the cub underneath his head. Which I mean, then I want to stitch that. <laughs> it's the only thing when you stitch along and you find another part and you're like, ooh, I want to do that bit. And then you're like, oh no, I need to do that bit now. And then you're like, nope, I'll go back to this bit. With that one, especially since you can see things coming in when you get to like the end of each page, you're like, ooh, where shall I go next? There's a lot of different dilemmas. I 
I'll just have to let me know as well. Seeing as I'm doing the, the two stitch with me's each week now, obviously I've been, the last ones I only did were like 40, 45 minutes long. So you'll have to let me know if that is long enough for you with it being two a week, or if you still want me to try and get to like the hour spot. I don't mind trying to get to the hour spot at all. I just need to, maybe I should look up subjects to talk about while I'm <laughs> while doing them. You can't see what I'm doing there because I've twisted. Is losing. You know, when I first did this one, I can't even remember stitching with black in it. But obviously, I had done because I'd finished the wolves and the rocks underneath. <laughs> Be like there was black in there. Mind you, I can't even remember stitching with three strands. I thought I was only doing two. It's amazing how. Different things are when you come to doing them the second time. Which reminds me as well, I've also been told I now need to get on with my mini deer creek for the second time as well. Because you know I did it for my brother and then I sort of wanted to do it again for myself at some point. Well, everyone seems to be doing mini deer creek. Um, who's doing it is... Jemima, the rocking stitcher, but she's doing the full version, I think, not the mini. And then there's uh, Debbie from Creative Video, she's doing it. I think she's doing the mini. Um, a couple of people on my Facebook group are doing it as well. I think. Who else is doing it? Yantina from Yantina Stitcher, she's doing it. I don't know which version she's doing now, I can't remember. Um, and I'm pretty sure I forgot a name. Lovely. Uh, and I watched it the other day, no. <sighs> My memory, I tell you. I can't remember a name. Sorry. I watched it anyway. She's one of the other Dutch ladies. Um, She's doing it as well. The name might come back to me later on and you might just get a random name just shouted at me. <laughs> I watched it the other day, no, she's doing Autumn Queen. Uh, not Autumn Queen. Autumn Queen? Nice big autumn piece. That is going to bug me now, because I can't remember the name. Well, this is shocking. <laughs> Watch her all the time as well. But anyway, she's doing it as well. You know what? I'm going to find out. <laughs> Because it's going to bug me. Um, who was it? Sit for a little bit of what I'm reading and watching as well. Welcome back to all my... Mm, I should have played shut up. Is it Lydia? Rings a bell. Oh, it is. Yeah, lovely stitches. Yeah. I knew it was another one, but yeah, that was her channel. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, there's a fair few of them doing it, and I was like, and uh, on the Facebook page, like, yeah, you need to start yours. I went, I've already done it. Like, you know, that must be a brother, not for you. You need to start yours now. It's like, oh. So you never know. Mini Deer Creek may be back. It won't be as it much doing as much progress on it like I did last year, because obviously this year it's Tiger Family. 
and then next year, and then need to decide what I'm going to focus on for that one. But I've got plenty of time to decide that. I'll say I've got plenty of time, I've got four months. Christmas is not far away, just to cheer everybody up. <laughs> Goes by so quick. Oops, sorry, just said what to do again. As Angela mentioned today, first thing she thought of when I said sorry for hitting the camera with my head was hit me with your rhythm stick. Don't know why she thought of that song, but hey, there we go. <laughs> as long as you're all going to be singing, hit me with your rhythm stick then. <clears throat> right, let's get these mugged off. So what we at now? Um, begin about 45 minutes, I think. So we'll leave that one there for today. So we'll be starting another thread. So again, um, zoom out so you can see it. There you go. See, so he really pops now. You can see the black in his nose, in his ears. He does make it in his nose there. It does make a difference having the, the black on there, even though it's on black Ada. But yeah, I do like it. So let me turn that off. So again I, again, I hope the little tips helped for working on dark coloured fabrics. I'll say if you can afford to get one of these the light pads, they are amazing to have. I'll say they're not dear. Um, well, they're not, they weren't in the UK anyway. So they're not that expensive. So they are definitely worth getting. So again, if you've got any questions or comments, guys, please feel free to drop those down below. Again, or email me at dizzystitcher at gmail.com or on Instagram at dizzystitcher. You can message me on there as well. Or if you're in my Facebook group, just send me a message in Facebook group. Um, so that's this one. I'm going to get another one done as well for this week. So that one will probably be... Well, let me know, guys. What do you think? Do you do you want to see the Super Size Tiger family each week? Or do you just want me to mix it up and just do two different projects each week? So I was thinking of maybe doing Super Size Tiger family one stitch with me and then the other one just a, a random one. Or do you want two random ones or what? So let me know what you think on that one as well. Um, so then we can get that one sorted. Um, but yeah, that's everything for me, guys. So again... Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, again, my this one should go up on Tuesday. And then the next one, I'm going to get up on Thursday this week instead of Friday. Um, and then the update video will be on, hopefully, Saturday, depending if I'm working or not. Um, but again, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, take care and stay safe out there. Um, happy crafting. Happy stitching. Happy housework. <laughs> Until my next video, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, take care and bye-bye for now.